I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. 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 Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to all of you. My name is Muhammad Salim from the cause of Science, Technology and Mankind, University of Technology Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Today we are going to discuss some interesting topic what we have gone through in the last one and a half years, uh, which is COVID-19. As we all know, last year on March 2020, WHO World Health Organization declaring an outbreak of deadliest virus called COVID-19. The world experiencing a pandemic situation, millions of jobs and uh, lives being sacrificed, the economy of the world being crashed, we struggle and strive until now. The war wasn't finished yet, but alhamdulillah, this year is a year for the hope, the year of vaccination. Yes, this year we are experiencing the largest vaccination campaign in human history. Coronavirus vaccine. Coronavirus vaccine. COVID-19 vaccine. 23 elderly people have died in days following the Pfizer vaccine jab in Norway. When we talk about COVID-19 vaccination, hundreds of perspectives and questions we can discuss about it. But related to our cause today, we will discuss two perspectives related to COVID-19 vaccine. First place in the perspective of Islam or Sharia towards COVID-19 vaccine. Second, the perspective of science and technology. First, we will discuss the perspective of Islam when we talk about Sharia. Ah. A lot of questions related to vaccine can be arised. For example, is it a halal? Is there any substance being prohibited? It uh, presents in the vaccines and a lot more questions. Basically, vaccination is a traditional method used the past few decades to improve our immunity. As well, we all, as we all know, Islams and a lot of national and international fatwas and scholars have no objection in the implementation of vaccination as long as come up with a strong justification and explanation. For understand the concept of Sharia related to the COVID-19 vaccine, first we must understand the terms called istihala and istihla. Then we can we must understand the categories of vaccine that have prohibited element only. And uh, finally, we can discuss the types of the vaccine enrolled in our country, Malaysia. What is istihala? What is istihla? Freelance preacher Dr. Abdurrahman Shukur explained it related to the terms we be used, where istihala is a natural process that uh, affects the legality of a substance. In other words, we can say that the substance uh, obtained from a haram or prohibited source that undergoes some chemical changes and physical characteristic changes and turn into another subject uh, or other substance with other characteristic, there it, therefore it's become halal or pure. This is a view of Hanafi school and been agreed by one of the well-known scholar Sheikh Yusuf Ar Qardawi and Sheikh Wahba Al Zuhali. Dr. Abrahman also explained istihala, a concept that referred to a substance that contain a tiny portions of prohibited element and into which a higher quantities of pure elements being added. Thus, it is eliminating the properties and characteristics of the original element in the substance. So now we can understand what is the istihala process and istihla uh, process. So we can conclude that saving lives is more important and that's what uh, Islam emphasizes on. So vaccine that contain prohibited element, meanwhile, are divided into two categories. For, so for the first place, we should discuss the first category. If the category is considered, if there is an, another alternative that is better and purer and derived from the trusted source, then the vaccine that contain prohibited element cannot be used. This is a basic of fatwas on vaccine. Second category is if there is no alternative and there is an emergency purpose, then the vaccine with the prohibited element or haram element is being allowed to order to save the lives and keeping with the objective of Sharia. In other words, all the fatwas come out with the strong justification and Islam also emphasize on saving lives is more important. Question of halal or haram doesn't arise in the case of COVID-19 vaccine, especially in the country enrollment. 
As far as COVID-19 vaccine are concerned, uh, Malaysia, we enrolled with mainly three brands of vaccine, namely Pfizer is a uh, US based, AstraZeneca from uh, UK based and uh, Sinovac from China based. These are the main three vaccine now we are enrolling. Uh, existing. From the existing information that shows that none of the vaccine contain any prohibited elements so far, for example like prosin or bovine increase. And hence the question whether the vaccines are halal or not doesn't arise as at all. Even on March, uh, even on December 2020, the Muzakara Committee of National Council of Islamic Affairs or MKI agreed that the use of COVID-19 vaccine is compulsory even for certain groups that identify the government and permissible for others. That means the National Council of Islamic Affairs agreed that the vaccine is permissible to the Muslims and also, of course, for the citizens of Malaysians. Hence, every citizen and Muslim in the country need to have no worries about the allegation that the COVID-19 vaccine have any prohibited elements. Okay, this is a time for us to play our role to end this war as soon as possible. The next part we will discuss about signs and tech related to the COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you so much for watching. Edward Jenner was a physician whom took samples from a cowpox blister and he inoculated an eight-year-old boy with the serum. He instantly developed a slight fever, a cough and a rash appeared in the spot of the injection. Luckily, the boy survived and was later injected with a serum of smallpox, but he did not develop any symptom of smallpox. Almost 200 years later, WHO declared that smallpox was completely eradicated. Vaccines themselves do not contain the antibiotics needed to fight the bacteria or virus. Instead, it tricks our body to mix the required proteins ourselves. Our body's immune system works in a unique way to destroy pathogens, which are harmful anomalous beings from outside our body. Our immunity system triggers a series of response in order to attempt to identify pathogens and remove them from our bodies. Most do so by the production of enzymes or special antibiotics that dissolve away the cell walls and genetically destroy the pathogens. Special cells in our body called B and T cells record the genetic makeup of the virus as a logbook of the virus's genetic makeup. In the event the actual virus enters the body, this time the B and T cell brings out the recipe to destroy the virus. This time the body is prepared to attack the virus and destroy it on time without the virus invading the body cells. The hardest part of vaccine manufacturing is to produce a virus culture that is weak enough so it doesn't harm the body while being still strong enough to trigger a response from our immune system. This is usually the main reason vaccines can take a while to manufacture and can be expensive. This vaccine contains the pathogens themselves but in a weakened or inactive state. These viruses when inoculated into the body can cause a triggered response by the body and since they are weakened they cannot develop into the full disease. Since LAVs still contain the virus in some form or another, it can be quite unpredictable at times. And there have been rare cases where the vaccine culture develops into the full virus and has caused symptoms. LAVs are not generally recommended for pregnant women and people with already weakened immune systems such as very old or young people. Example of such vaccine include yellow fever, cowpox, measles, mumps and even tuberculosis. Vaccine is a bit safer as it contains dead or destroyed parts of the virus or bacteria. This option is usually meant for elderly or severely weak people with compromised immune system. The virus is destroyed through chemical means either by physically using heat or radiation. 
Examples include hepatitis A, rabies, and polio. A small part of the virus known as an antigen is extracted and produced in a culture. By isolating only the needed proteins which help the body identify the pathogen, the body can effectively prepare for the actual virus without developing any side effects. Another example of subunit vaccine is mRNA vaccine or messenger RNA vaccine. This is a protein molecule which promotes the production of the virus itself. When injected into the body, our cells itself produce the virus, but in disparities in small parts, which means the virus never fully develops and in the end we never actually form the symptoms of the virus. Eventually, our immune cells identify these foreign proteins and eliminates them. This kind of vaccine is probably the newest in the market and a lot remains to be researched on them. However, a very common new vaccine that came out is the Pfizer vaccine for Corona.